Hey guys, another video for you on the IC9700. I'm just on my way to Rex VK7MO's place and uh, we're going to have a look uh, at his rig. There's been uh, a very important modification done to his rig, so we'll have a look at that. And we will also ask him for a review what uh, features he's liked about the radio um, and uh, see what his thoughts are on that. Rex does a lot of EME work, so uh, a lot of digital modes. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what he actually thinks of this rig and how that's going to help him in uh, maybe breaking some more records, of course. So that's uh, coming up soon. With, with Rex now, you've had the radio for quite a while. What, what sort of um, things have you enjoyed about the, the radio? And I know you love it now, <laughs> compared to your 910. <laughs> So well, yeah, actually, I, I thought I might just explain why I love it compared to the 910. My 910's actually over here. <laughs> and one of the things with the 910, to, to, to work it for EME, in this day and age, if you buy a new computer, they come with combo ports, not line in and line out. Yep. And the only way, and that, every time you plug into a combo port, unless it decides it knows what it's receiving, you get a different answer. So the only way to overcome that is you need a se separate external sound card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you also need an interface. <laughs> you also need to GPS lock the radio. So down here we have uh, a GPS and uh, in my case I convert it to 30.2 megs. All these things need extra cables that have got to be put together. Now the beauty of the 9700, if you want a GPS lock, you've got to have a GPS, but other than that, just a single cable, USB A to USB connection, you don't need anything else. And that also doubles as well as the, the data port too, not just the audio, but the data. Uh, so. Yes, and it does, yeah. it, it does the cat control to follow Doppler correction on EME. Yep. Uh, it does the PTT. You can plug it in and every time it finds the right port works on that ah. system. Inevitably, it comes up with a different port every time because you've got too many ports that you've got to connect. Yeah. Uh, and you're out in the field, you want to make life simple. Yeah. <laughs> so, from all those reasons, well, there's actually one fundamental reason why I wanted to move from the 910, is my 910s have been carted around Australia for probably 100,000 kilometres. <laughs> Uh, in red dust yeah. and they're getting unreliable. Yeah. <laughs> I love the radio and now that this one is GPS locked it does everything I would want. Lovely and stable. Some of the things that a benefit over the 910 are that the pass band is essentially flat from about two, 200 hertz out to almost three kilohertz. So for wideband digital modes uh, like QRA E or even D, you, you want a nice wide flat pass band. And uh, whereas my 910's got ripple, that's up to about two and a half dB of ripple. What we've done here is I've, I've basically feeding broadband noise into the radio and then looking at the pass band. Now there's a little, little peak right at the end there, but it's below, it's probably 50 hertz actually, a little bit of humps. But other than that, it's essentially a flat pass band all the way up to, to three kilohertz. And it's physically the same size as a 910 it's, well. it's the same size. Yep. Uh, I mean, I do have a 9100, but I wouldn't take it portable. It's just too big and too lumpy and, <laughs> and so forth. I should say, there's a lot of features in this radio are a big plus on, say, the, the 910, which I don't use because I, I tend to focus on weak signal stuff. But uh, I think most people are going to enjoy this radio a lot. And if you've got it GPS locked, I think everyone will enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of another radio that's been so, so hyped before it's actually come out. There's been a lot of people that have been really looking forward to it coming out and I think now that they've been released and it's it's now available, I think a lot of people are uh, really happy with what they've got. 
I think that's For right. For the most part, then you Yes. Mm. I like the little, there's a little feature that allows you to set the maximum power output. Mm -hmm. And that's good when you're using it with a transverter. You can set that to say one watt, which, which I do for when I'm on 1296 or uh, on 10 gigs. So and is, that, is, that a, is that a setting that's independent from the main power setting? That's right. Yep. Yes. So you can wind up the power setting as much as you want, but it won't accept it. It, it won't go. Yeah. A thing called power limit, and at the moment, see, I've, on 1296, it's normally 10 watts, so I've got it set to 10%, which is one watt. And there's a limit here which prevents it going over 10%. Now, if I went to the actual RF power, which I can do there, I can, I can turn it up over, over 10%, but brighter yellow indicates that the power itself doesn't go above the 10%. Oh, one hertz cat control is really good. Uh, the 910 does one hertz cat control which is good for tracking uh, on the moon. Most of the time you don't need to one hertz because uh, the, the Doppler spreading on, off the moon's generally up to uh, tens of hertz, if not even a hundred hertz. But occasionally when you're trying to do really weak signal stuff with small antennas, you pick a time when the spreading is down just one or two hertz and then you want to actually use the Doppler to track it to that accuracy, so that's good. There's no ALC overshoot, which is really good. Uh, people initially were reporting that it was triggering their PAs. In fact, what was happening is the radio was so fast that it, it was sending RF to, the, to your linear before your antenna changeover had changed over and so your linear would trip. But it wasn't because of overshoot, it was just because it was transmitting too quickly. There is an adjustment in the radio that will allow you to delay the transmission for up to 30 millihertz, and that generally fixes it with most linears. Should say though that I would prefer, and I have put in my list of what I'd like ICOM to do, I'd prefer they gave us the option of adjusting that up to 100 or 150 millihertz to give time for waveguide switches to change over because waveguide switches are a bit slow. They, if they can change that, which should be a simple software change, that would be an advantage. One thing I find a little bit odd is if you want to change frequency, you, you press 1296 if you want to change, and then you can say go to two meters or some other band. I guess in my day, one expected that there'd be a single knob that allowed you to swap between bands. Now, that's no big pain once you get used to it. In its default configuration, the radio is, is comes with 144 and the second frequency of 432, and, and you can, so you have the option in, particularly in satellite modes of transmitting on one and the other. If your radio is set up that way and you're on 144 and you say you want to go to 432, 432 is blanked out and won't let you do it. You've got to get that out of that mode so you can switch bands. Just, just a, a thing that's a bit confusing until you get used to it. <laughs> Unless you're actually using it in a, a split band mode, you just, just have one frequency on it and then you, you flip here and you can go to what, four, 144 or 432 or 1296. The other thing is the memories are separate for each band. So you just can't use your memories to flip between frequencies. You've got to go through the process of flipping to the band first and then you can use your memories to move. It's just a few more steps than you probably feel comfortable with, but you, we'll all learn to, to, to get around it. Yeah, once you get used to it. Yeah. What about the waterfall on the, on the 9700? Uh, well, there's, there's no waterfall on the, the 910, of course. Yep. The waterfall probably isn't useful for EME. The mm. signals are too weak. For example, if you look at this waterfall at the moment, 
There is a strong signal here which is being produced by a GPS reference, but the actual signal I am looking at should be there, and there's no sign of it whatsoever. But if I look on Spectrum Lab, this is quite a nice, strong signal on Spectrum Lab. So I don't think it's going to be, the waterfall on the radio is going to be that useful for finding weak EME signals. But, but it's a nice to have thing. We put a lot of effort into convincing ICOM that this radio had to be GPS deolockable. And for some unknown reason, the message got twisted <laughs> before it got to the engineers. And, and it's not GPS lockable as it stands. But and and with, with that too, it is an advantage that they do know that that's a feature that we want. Because if it is a hardware revision that they need to do, then they might find it, it could, ICOM could release something like the FT991 did, where they released the A version where they fixed the waterfall. Right. Now they might do a 9700 different revision that's actually changing the, the function of the, the reference input on the back. So you just never know what, what ICOM might do with future, yeah. with future batches anyway. That's right. And, and that's the importance of HAMS giving them feedback, which uh, we have been doing. Uh, it's not that we're negative about the radio, it's just that we want them to make it uh, what, make a, a, an excellent radio perfect. <laughs> this radio has been GPS locked with Glenn VK1XX's system, uh, which means I only have to feed 10 megs into it, I don't have to generate 30.2 like I do for the 910. Once you do that, it's essentially spot on. So uh, with, with Glenn's solution, obviously it's a hardware solution. The likelihood of there being a, a firmware or a software solution by ICOM is pretty slim, isn't it? Uh, Glenn, who knows a lot more about this than me, believes it's potentially possible. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping that either ICOM will come up with a firmware solution or that ICOM might come up with something similar to what Glenn's done it might be a factory install that they will do. Whether, whether in fact they are prepared to do anything, of course we don't know, we're just guessing. Uh, until I come decide which way they're going to go, whether they'll do anything, uh, there's not much point in us pushing it any further. At least what we've done is demonstrate. It is possible. It is possible. Yeah. <laughs> All the parts in this radio are an order of magnitude smaller than the parts in the 9100 and another order of magnitude less than the 910, it would need more than the average ham to be able to install it. He's looking at possibilities of how he might redesign it so that it would be easier. It's still not going to be easy. <laughs> uh, what we will do is we'll, we'll tune the radio such that uh, this week signal source is spot on frequency. We can now see the, the signal is varying a little bit. It's not varying a lot. <laughs> and this, this radio is GPS locked and it's listening to a GPS locked source. Now, the particular GPS locked source is one that is only a TCXO, it's not in a double oven. So there'll, there'll be some drift due to the, the GPS lock source. It's drifting around a little bit because the GPS source itself is not perfect, but we can now, what we can do is use the same frequency for the GPS lock, or same GPS to lock the signal source as the radio, so that any drift is then due to the radio. <laughs> So we've now locked the, the signal source to the same GPS as the radio. And you can see the, the frequency is now, up to here it was wobbling around with a separate GPS and it's now perfectly stable. It's not exactly on frequency, it's probably about 0.1 of a hertz off frequency at 1296 and that's just the resolution, there's two resolutions that cause an issue. One is the resolution of Glenn's uh, 
system that G does the GPS locking. He had to use a, a synthesizer with quite a lot of bits, 2 to the 26 or 28, <laughs> to get close, but you can never get it perfect. He calculated it would be 0.3 of a hertz out at 1296, but in fact it's come out about 0.1 hertz out, and that's because there's another synthesizer in the radio itself, in this case has compensated for the, the small error. Bear in mind that from here to here is only one hertz, so th this is stable to, well, yeah. better than a tenth of a hertz. Yeah. And probably even, even people who are fanatics like me about getting stability right <laughs> wouldn't worry about it. <laughs>